Hi everybody! Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I decided I would talk about layover inductions. So there are multiple ways to have an induction. The normal ones are they're going to use a Foley bulb if you are not dilated very far. Um, they can do Cervidil, which is a prostaglandin that would stay in your uh, vagina beside your cervix for 12 hours and that helps to soften your cervix and sometimes it does cause some contractions might help you dilate a little bit the third option is usually Cytotec or Misoprostol that is a medicine that they can give you by mouth or placed in your vagina also beside your cervix um, it's usually given every four to six hours until they can soften your cervix, make it dilate. Sometimes you will go into labor, and that might be all you need to have your baby. The last uh, option, which is typically the, the more common one that they use, is Pitocin so, or Oxytocin. Um, oxytocin is the hormone in your body. Pitocin is the synthetic version that is given to you to help induce your labor. And that is going to cause your contractions to get closer and stronger. Um, now, if your body is not ready to go into labor, it will not always respond to Pitocin. So there are times when they will use the Pitocin, which it's gradually increased until you get to a maximum number. Um, that maximum number is different at every facility. It can be anywhere from 20 to 40. Um, I am a labor and delivery nurse, as you guys know. I'm pretty conservative with Pitocin. Um, I feel like if your body doesn't need more than six to 12 milliunits of Pitocin to go into labor, that if you are getting to 20 and 30 or even 40, that obviously your body is not ready to be in labor. And those receptor sites aren't binding with the synthetic oxytocin and it's not causing you to go into labor. So a lot of times they can turn it off and do what's called a Pitocin break. Um, that can be anywhere from an hour um, preferably two hours or overnight even. Um, sometimes they will turn it off, let you eat, shower, and try again the next day. Um, so what I want everybody to know about inductions is that even though you're going in, whether you're 39 weeks, 40 weeks, 41 weeks, um, or earlier, that inductions aren't necessarily fast. They can be anywhere from a quick precipitous labor two, three, four days. Um, it just depends on you and your body and how you respond to the interventions that they may be doing. Um, so there's a lot of controversy on when to get an induction. Um, ACOG usually says 39 weeks. Um, so term is anywhere from 38 to 40 weeks. Um, late term is more 40 to 41 weeks, up to 42. 42 weeks and plus is post dates, and that is by definition from ACOG. So um, you are term at 39 weeks, pretty much like right in the middle of term, 38 to 40. So, um, if you are getting an induction for something such as a big baby um, or discomfort or post dates, but you're 40 weeks, then that's actually technically not a medical induction. That is an elective induction. Um, those aren't real reasons to be induced. Um, I mean, they can be real reasons, they are used, but they aren't necessarily uh, a medical indication, such as gestational diabetes, uh, preeclampsia, uh, cholestasis. Those are medical inductions that are needed to be done because 
something is wrong with mom or something is wrong with baby. Um, so otherwise, if it's a healthy pregnancy with no complications at all, mom and baby are healthy, there is no reason that you can't go up to 41 weeks. Most first time moms will go into labor spontaneously um, on average from 40 weeks and three days to I believe about 41 weeks. So, and 40 weeks is actually term. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm 39 weeks, it's time to go. Not necessarily because as I've told you before, your EDC is a estimate. So that estimate is not necessarily accurate. It can be off seven days before or after, which means that your due date might be slightly altered. Um, with saying that, it is a very close predictor around about when you will be having your baby. But just because you don't go into labor by your 40 week EDC or estimated due date or date of conception, that doesn't mean that your body isn't going to do this. It just means that it might not be quite time for you. Um, there are lots of methods to go into labor naturally, which I have talked about some of those on my website, uh, labordoulacompany.com, and I have blogs down at the bottom. I have also talked about that on my Instagram a little bit, which is also Labor Doula Company, or my Facebook, Labor Doula Company. So if you'd like to see those, go by and read them, and I will make my next episode about ways that you can help start your labor naturally. It's not necessarily inducing. It means that your body is going to be ready and these things that you can do will just help trigger that labor to get started, help those contractions get closer, and help your, dial your cervix dilate. So tune back in next time.